G'day everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're going to be going through my round 4 AFL tips and predictions as well as going over round 3, seeing what we got right, seeing what we got incorrect and, and then of course we'll also be going through my big calls to see if I can avoid a punishment for the second week in a row. So let's start off with round 3, I think for the first time I can actually show you guys on screen, so I am, recording, I am screen recording this, um, I did pretty well, I got 7 out of 9 which is my best, yeah definitely my best tipping score to date. Uh, I tipped Sydney to win by 11, and I got that one off by 11, funnily enough. I got off by 22. The Togs won by 11, so, geez, I got the right margin, just not the right team. I tipped Melbourne to beat Essendon, which they did comfortably. I tipped Port to beat Adelaide, which, well, Port just choked it, and Adelaide would just turn it on in the last 5, 10 minutes. I tipped GWS to beat Gold Coast, which they got it done quite comfortably. I tipped Geelong to beat Collingwood, which they got it done, but not necessarily comfortably. They had to pull something out their ass in that final term to get that comeback win. I then tipped Brisbane and beat North, which they absolutely smashed them. Carlton to beat Hawthorne, which they just held on. Got the Saints to, you know, get up, tip them to get up, and I sort of got it right in a little bit of an upset, some might say. And then I tipped Freya to beat West Coast, which was quite a comfortable win. So 7 out of 9. We'll uh, go over the big calls as well. I did get 2 out of 9 correct, so spoiler alert, I do have to do another punishment. Uh, I'll go over which ones I got correct. I got... Both of the Saturday games correct, funnily enough. I predicted there to be 14 or more behinds combined at halftime in the Collingwood-Geelong game. And I can thank Collingwood for that because they scored 11 out of the 15 behinds. So uh, I got that one correct. And then I also got the uh, the one for North v Brisbane correct where I predicted Brisbane to kick seven goals in a row without North scoring. And that, yeah, that happened. It almost happened twice. That was how much of a demolition that game was. But unfortunately, the Sunday games couldn't prevail for myself and I only got two correct. So here are all the punishments. Uh, AFL Legends had the most likes, which was Goal King Challenge in the pitch black and pitch dark. Um, and then I had some other comment, but I didn't heart it. It had the second most likes, funnily enough. And it was go to an interstate game in away, but cheer for the other team. Like, I just what a waste that would be if going to an interstate game but not actually supporting the Saints. So I decided not not to do that because I will be going to interstate games this year, but I'm not going to waste it on doing that. I've also got Luke McMahon which has run 15 laps around the MCG before an AFL game. And then the last one was to tip the opposite team, which I've had a couple of times, but uh, yeah, this will be for next week's tipping, not for this week's. So let's spin the wheel. What do we get? We have landed on AFL Legends Punishment, the one with three, the most likes, and that was to film a Gold King Challenge in pitch dark, or in pitch black, essentially. He said 2am right now. I've got... Quite a busy next couple of weeks, so uh, we'll see when that can ha when I can get this done. It'll probably be the week after next, um, but we'll see. Let's get right into things for round four and the tips. And the first game we've got Port taking on Melbourne at the Adelaide Oval Thursday night footy. Look, honestly, if I saw the fixture before the start of the season, I would have expected this to be you know one of the best games of the round. But looking at all the other games, this this could have every potential of being a one side affair to the Ds. The Ds have just looked that much better than the Power so far this season. They've won three games in a row. Look, I'm not the first person to say that they probably haven't been playing their best footy at the Ds, but they've just been getting the job done. And uh, well, the Power, they're on the other end of the scale. They just haven't been getting the job done. It was a must-win game to beat the Crows. It just really was. And uh, well, they were in a winning position up by 19 points with like seven-ish, seven, eight minutes to go. But then they shut the bed and they allow the Crows to kick three goals in succession. Obviously, Jordan Dawson kicked the winning goal after the siren. And now the power are staring down the barrel at potentially an 0-5 start because they've got Melbourne and then the undefeated Blues the week after. So obviously, it's, I guess in a way, it's a must win, but I can't see him winning this game. Melbourne, they beat them away last year convincingly. I think they'll do it again this year, honestly. I'm going to go the Ds to win it by... 33 points. I think they'll get it done quite easily, and it's not going to be that much of a contest, honestly. And uh, I'll quickly go over my big call, and that is for Port Adelaide to score four or less goals by half time. Now, the Friday game, we've got Geelong v Brisbane at GMHBA Stadium. This could be game of the round, honestly. Both sides are in some pretty good form. I was actually originally going to go to this game, but I eventually opted out because it, there weren't too many tickets and uh, decided, well, there was probably no points. So I'll be streaming this instead. Hopefully, I can get a few mates down to my place this to watch this game. We'll see what happens. But nonetheless, I expect this to be a really good game. Last year in 2021, Geelong Brisbane played off in a classic. Brisbane probably should have won. And uh, I, I probably see him winning this game as well. 
Even though the Geelong Cats are favourites, obviously they're at GMHBA. They just play so good at GMHBA. They have that much of an advantage with all the fans. They just know the ground that well. And uh, last week they uh, well they they were challenged by the Pies. Let's be real, the Pies took it up to them for three quarters. They were up by thirty at three quarter time. But Geelong just they picked up a couple of gears in that uh, last quarter, led by Selwood, Dangerfield, Stewart, um, Cameron. Of course, kicked six goals. So. They were just too fast for them that last quarter of the Cats, and it goes to show that they're still a really good side and a contender still for the flag, probably. And the Lions, well, I, I, have, I didn't watch the game because I was watching the other game, but there's not really too much to say or to take out of that game. It's just the Lions are that much better. They're a class above North Melbourne, and they won the game by 108 points. You don't often see too many 100-point smashings in the AFL nowadays, but I mean, the Lions were just way too good. They could have won it by more with all the scoring shots they had, so... Look, I think the Lions can win this game. I think they are a better side than the Cats. It's just that the fact that it's played at the GMHBA makes me lean on to potentially going for the Cats. But I'm going to go for a slight upset here. I think most will probably go for Geelong, considering it's that GMHBA. Uh, but I'm going to go Brisbane in this one and buy seven points in another thriller. My big call will be that both Cameron, Jeremy, and Charlie combined for eight or more goals. So we'll head down to the SCG for the start of the Saturday games, and we've got a 2.40 p.m. start, I'm assuming because of the AFLW Grand Final. And I think for this one, it's another no-brainer for who to tip. The Sydney Swans are that much better than the Roos. It's not even funny. Uh, obviously, they didn't have their greatest game against the Bulldogs last week. They were definitely the second-rate side in it. They were actually lucky to only lose by 11 points, if I'm going to be completely honest. North Melbourne, well, you could argue that they were lucky to only lose by 108 points uh, because of all the uh, scoring shots the Lions had, especially, I think, in that last quarter. That had 27 inside 50. So it, it could be another ugly uh, outing for the, the Kangaroos in this one. I, I can't see the Roos winning. They've been deplorable in the last couple performances, that is for sure. Um, and Sydney, yeah, I think they'll they'll bounce back after a poor showing against the, the Dogs and they'll win this game comfortably. I want to go Sydney by 59. I think they can definitely win by more, but I feel like North will, will be a little bit more impressed. They'll they'll show a bit more um, after the Lions lost. But if the Swans can kick accurately, which they usually do, we could see another 100-point belting. And my um, big call will be that the Swans have 11 or more individual goal kickers. We head down to Marvel Stadium for the 4.35 p.m. clash between Collingwood and the West Coast Eagles. Uh, strange one, because Collingwood don't often play at Marvel, particularly for their home games. Collingwood... They, they impressed me last week against the uh, the Cats. I watched this game. And I really thought they were going to win it at three-quarter time. They were just too fast for them in that third quarter. They kicked seven goals in a row. But the Cats flicked a switch in that second half, in that, in that last quarter, and uh, ran over the top of the Pies. And that's probably because they're a bit younger. They weren't as mature as the Cats, and they I feel like they just ran out of legs in that one. But they can't take anything away from the Pies. They have been super impressive in the first three weeks under Craig McRae. And uh, I think against the Eagles, who just looked pretty average against the Dockers last week, it's a pretty simple tip. West Coast, they had to bring a lot of their players back in who had COVID the week before, and you could tell in that second half, even though I didn't watch much of the game, they were quite tired. They didn't seem like they were fit for the challenge against the Dockers. But definitely, though, it was West Coast's worst performance for the year uh, so far in round three. And uh, I, I don't really know who they're going to bring back or what's going to happen, but Right now, you can't be trusting the Eagles. Collingwood will win this game. Collingwood by 38 points. With my big call, that Collingwood score over 120 points. Next time, we've got Richmond taking on the Western Bulldogs at the MCG. The Tigers, they were pretty good against the Saints, albeit for the first three quarters before they completely fell away in that last. They just conceded goals. They were leaking goals. At one stage, uh, the Saints kicked 64 consecutive points from starting from the end of the third to the end of the last. And the Dogs... Well, they needed to win, and they did. They they played their best footy they have all year, and uh, honestly, they probably should have won the game by more. A lot of people were saying the free kick count was just just horrendous, and the Swans should have won the game based on the umpiring. But look, the, the Dogs deserve to win. If you if you're watching a game, you could tell that the Dogs had that many more chances, but they just weren't able to take them. The way they played though was pretty uh, impressive, and uh, it goes to show that the Dogs are still going to be a contender this year for the flag. That is for sure. Richmond. Look, they could win the game if they play their best footy, but based on you know expectations and uh, how I personally see the two sides, even though it is at the G, the Dogs really should win this game, and I, I can't see them dropping this one. So 
I think this will be a decent game. I don't think it's going to be smashing by no means. I'm going to go the Dogs win it by 14. A big call, which is similar to what happened last week, will be that the Dogs win the free kick out by over 12. So last Saturday game, and I'm looking at the odds here on ESPN, and the two sides are both $1.90. So if anything, it could almost be one of the games of the round as well, based on the odds. The Dockers, they got the job done quite comfortably against the Eagles last week by 56 it was. I still don't think they played their best footy. I think they can definitely take it up a notch, particularly considering they were versing it at side in the Eagles who they just didn't really seem up to the contest. And the Giants, well, they had to get the win to avoid starting 0-3, and they did. They probably should have won the game by more as well. They just didn't really take all of their chances, and they completely dominated that game, really, in that first in the first three quarters especially. They kicked the first five goals of the game, and the game was pretty much done after quarter time. They were just too good for the Suns. So it's it's a hard one to tip because I think the Dockers should win considering it's at home and they're going to get a few plays back. I think Sarong, um, I think the Sean Darcy's back. And I don't know about Dave and Mundy. I don't think Fife isn't back for a while. The Giants, they're just too tough to tip. I haven't tipped the Giants correctly so far this season. And my, my heart says the Dockers. But again, I think upsets will happen this round and I think the Giants winning will be an upset. But I always tip poorly for the Giants. So I feel like if I tip the Giants when I don't expect them to win, they will end up winning the game. So I'm going to go the Giants win this game by 12 points with my big call that the combined score will be less than 140 points in a low-scoring affair. Head to the Sunday games. And the first one is between Essendon and Adelaide at Marble Stadium. The Bombers, they were okay against the Ds. To be honest, they took it up to them for a lot of the game. I think the, the Bombers were within one or two goals with five minutes left in that final term. But then had Langdon kick that absolute miraculous goal and the D's obviously got the job done comfortably by five goals uh, but I don't know they still didn't look great especially in that first second quarter where they just weren't able to take their opportunities and the D's just looked that much better than them Adelaide they just played with a lot of spirit in that showdown against the power they wanted it more than the power and they did they caught the win after the sign in what was one of the best games one of the best finishes I've ever seen I think Essen have had definitely a uh, an improvement in performances in the last couple of weeks and Let's let's not forget that they versed three of the top four sides last year to start the season. So they've had a tough start to the draw. I think they can turn things around this season. And that obviously starts with winning games. I think they win their first game of the season against the Crows by 23 points with my big call. The Bombers come back from 18 or more points behind to win the game. So the second Sunday game we have is between Hawthorne and St Kilda. Probably the one the game that I'm looking forward to the most. And honestly, the probably the toughest game to tip as an outsider, honestly. Like, these two sides were were very good on the weekend. Um, the Hawks, well, I, I watched only the first quarter of that game against Carlton because I was obviously going to the Saints game. And uh, they, they did look pretty poor. They looked second rate. They just couldn't keep up with the Blues dominating the clearances. I thought, geez, they're going to get done by a lot here. But then they, they just came back. I, I don't really know how they got it done, but I saw at one stage they were actually in the lead late into that last quarter. But obviously the Blues, they found a way to win that after they should have won it, honestly, after you know quarter time. But Hawthorne looked good this year. They're playing with a obviously a different brand of footy under Sam Mitchell. They, they just take more risks. They want to take the game on. They play fast attacking footy. The Saints, we looked out of it though halfway through that third quarter. We just didn't look like we were keeping up with the Tigers in what was a shootout to start off the game. But then we just lifted up the pressure. It lifted up the intensity and we... Well, the Tigers couldn't match it. They We scored 10 goals in a row, led by Max King in that last quarter, and we won by 33 points. So, um, yeah, this is a tough game to tip. It is at the MCG, but I feel like we play all right at the G. We won our last two games there last year. The last time we played Hawthorne at the MCG, we got done by 145 points. But that was, you know, when we were bottom and Hawthorne won the flag. So, I think this game could easily be the game of the round. But as a Saints fan, I think we can get it done. Uh, but it'll be a close game. So, I'm going to go the Saints to get up by 9 with my big call being that 30 or more goals are combined in this game. And the last game of the round, one that I'm probably not going to be watching, is between Gold Coast and Carlton at Metricon Stadium. Carlton got a very tough one-point win against Hawthorne last week and it was a really good game. They exploded out the blocks in that first quarter, kicking seven goals, but then sort of slowed down and the Hawks got back into the game. But the Blues were mature enough to fight back after Hawthorne hit the lead and end up obviously winning the game, which, look at that, they're 3-0. and They're third on the ladder. They are looking really good. And they are primed to potentially start 5-0 and because they have got Port Adelaide next week who are yet to win a game. Gold Coast were very disappointing for me. I mean, you look at the scoreboard and you see they only lost by 28 and you go, oh, that wasn't so bad. But, geez, I watched, I streamed this game and disappointingly, 
it was one of the worst games of footy I've watched. Gold Coast just was just didn't look like they were up to it. They can see the first five goals of the game, and it was pretty much over by then. But anyways, I probably will stick with the Blues, though. I think they're a more trustworthy side. They should win. They're a better side. Um, but I, I think this could be close. But uh, I think Carlton win it fairly comfortably by 20 points. And my big call will be... Cripps, Chera, and Walsh to combine for 100 or more disposals. So those were my tips for the round, for round four. I'll quickly go over them. I went Melbourne by 33, Brisbane over Geelong, Sydney, Hollingwood, Western Bulldogs, GWS, Essendon, St Kilda, and Carlton. So again, I went quite safe, but you know the 50-50 games, St Kilda, GWS, and Brisbane, they could go either way, in my opinion. And of course, uh, we'll quickly go over round three on my tipping comp to see how everyone went. We got two who got a perfect score. That was Cooper, GWS, and John Tix. And then we got actually quite a few people that tipped eight. Look at that. A, a very fair amount. We got we see Geordie Pluto in there. Um, we've got uh, Susie. Uh, we've got a few few, fresh, few familiar faces who did all right in that round, but Cooper, GWS, and John Tix were the best in that round, scoring nine. It's quite close. We've got K-Pro, Banger Harvey, Ollie 166 Saints fan 2007 Cade Wilson, who are all in the top five. Yeah, pretty close to my tipping comp. I'm still very far behind, but I've been doing better in the last couple of rounds. Appreciate everyone for watching. Appreciate all the support. If you haven't watched my vlog for yesterday's game uh, between Richmond and St. Kilda, go watch that because I thought it was pretty good. And uh, I'll see you soon in my next video. Cheers. Cheers.